Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today I wanted to talk about an issue that I see folks that are relatively new to Terraform make. Um, this is a mistake that it's not a huge deal because, I mean, technically it doesn't really hurt anything, but it just adds additional clutter to your code and could cause other junior Terraform developers or people new to Terraform to become confused as to what you're doing. And this surrounds the shadowy realm of dependencies within Terraform. You see, Terraform automatically detects dependencies implicitly for most, for most cases. Um, but there are certain cases where you need to declare dependencies explicitly. Now, the beloved and hated depends on meta attribute can be used to, to fill up every single resource in your Terraform solution. If you want to, that doesn't make very readable code. I'm going to show you the mistake that, that is often made. And we're going to talk through the thought process that you should go through to, to decide whether something needs to be in the depends on meta argument or not. So let's look at this code. So here I, I'm working on just a little sample for my virtual machine module. Again, this is a module that I use just to spit out VM, you know, VMs pretty easily. And I've got you know, the usual suspects. I got a resource group. I got a network, which I'm using a very simple network topology uh, just to drop, drop some network so I can put some VMs on it. Um, and then I have a VM here. Now, what you'll often see is um, maybe somebody is thinking, Ooh, I better be careful. Like, um, I know that there's this attribute called depends on, and I know I need to use it when there's dependencies. And I know my VM is dependent on this network. So I should go and I should go declare a depends on, and I should go in and put my module network in there. And I feel a lot better now because now I know that Terraform knows that my VM is dependent on this network. So basically I'm being smarter than Terraform and I'm telling Terraform, look, Terraform, you know, I'm a human, you're a computer, it's cool. I know better than you. <laughs> so make sure you get this network thing done before you move on to the VM. And if you're used to doing imperative coding, you're used to having to have this conversation with the computer, right? It's like, look, step one, step two, step three, very procedural, right? But with Terraform, this is not necessary, right? In most cases. With Terraform, it constructs a dependency graph automatically. Um, so you don't have to go through this imperative process. What I'm doing here is essentially creating a very sequential order of operations that I have to explicitly define. There's not a lot of difference between that and, you know, between using uh, HCL and Terraform in this way and writing this out in CLI, is there? So let's not do that. Um, here's why. I don't need this explicit depends on because um, I'm already referencing this module uh, right here when I set the subnet input variable on this virtual machine module. And so Terraform immediately picks up, hey, this module right here that called VM1, which, you know, comes up, you know, is, is sourced from this location, um, has these inputs and it's dependent on this module and it's dependent on this resource group resource and it's dependent on this TLS key, right? And so Terraform, when it creates its execution plan, it will do that sequencing automatically for you. You don't have to do anything. And Terraform will wait until this module is completely done before it pipes in this subnet ID and initiates the virtual machine number one module. Um, likewise with the SSH key and the resource group. It's gonna go provision the resource group, wait till that's done, wait, wait till the Azure ARM REST API says, yep, resource group, good to go, moving on. So you don't have to declare these depends on. Now, I see, I see depends on attributes sprinkled a lot in code bases where there's people that are new to Terraform. And usually they, they encounter one of those situations where there actually is a depends on uh, need, but they, they can't figure out what is actually, you know, the, the explicit dependency that they need to de declare. So they end up just filling this depends on attribute with like everything under the sun, right? Um, so how, how do you know 
like what should go in the depends on um, versus what shouldn't. Well, right off the bat, anything that your block, in this case, my module block, it could be a resource block, it could, you know, whatever type of block it is. If your block is already referencing that thing, module network, TLS, private key, Azure resource group, you know, and that specific object, right? Then you don't need to declare it in your depends on attribute. Case, case closed, end of story. So what do you need to declare in your depends on attribute? Well, those are things that you do not declare in your, in this block, right? So if you know that, that this virtual machine, because you know the architecture and you know what this virtual machine is doing is actually dependent on, hmm, let's say this storage account over here. Um, and this storage account, let's say it's got some, you know, tarball in it that this VM is going to go download the tarball and in, you know, install it, install the, tar install the, some software and things like that. And basically this, when this VM boots up, it's expecting that storage account to be there. Um, and the storage account isn't there, then you're going to have to declare uh, a depends on. And that's to prevent the race condition, right? It might not always happen. Maybe the storage account gets created like quickly and, you know, gets done before the VM and then you don't have to worry about it because Terraform does things in parallel when it can, when it detects that there's no dependency on these things, it will try and do them in parallel. And so sometimes, Storage account will get created. If there's no depends on, storage account will get created and it'll get created before the VM even spins up. But other cases, maybe the storage account is uh, the resource provider in Azure is running a little slow that day. It didn't get coffee in the morning and it comes back a little slower with the final, yep, storage account ready to go. Have a nice day. And the VM is already up and running and looking for the storage account in order to be found, right? And so, in that situation, you need to declare this explicit dependency um, in order to prevent, where's my storage account, in order to prevent that race condition from happening. So that's the, that's the basic rule. If you know that there is some implicit relationship between two blocks within your Terraform code that do not manifest themselves as references on the blocks themselves, like you can see here, there's other than my depends on meta argument, there is no reference to that storage account on this VM. Therefore, Terraform has no idea that this VM is somehow dependent on that storage account. You know, you, you have to declare depends on. How, how does this happen? Well, the, this, this most often happens when there's resources that have sub resources. You know, Key Vault is a great example of that. You know, like access policies on Key Vault or role based access control, uh, role role assignments, you know, if a, if you need to have a role assignment before you can do something, you know, oftentimes there's, there's, when you provision the VM or something like that, it's, you're not dependent on the role assignment being there. Right. Um, so Terraform is going to go create the role assignment, go create the VM and whichever comes first happens. But like, if that role assignment has to be there, you need to declare an explicit dependency. Otherwise, the VM is going to go and spin up and won't have that role assignment. Things are going to go sideways. So role assignments, I think, are a good one. Access policies to Key Vault are also a good one. You know, the, the classic one is Terraform's own access to Key Vault uh, becomes a race condition, right? When If you create a Key Vault and you create an access policy to that Key Vault to allow Terraform to create secrets, and then you go create within Terraform, you go create secrets. If you don't declare an explicit dependency, and so basically Terraform is gonna create a plan. It's gonna say, okay, I've got this key vault, I got this access policy, and I got a secret. The secret and the access policy are dependent on the key vault. So I'm gonna go create the key vault first. Okay, key vault's done. Now I'm gonna go create the access policy and the secret in parallel. Well, guess what? Uh, you can't provision the secret using Terraform if Terraform doesn't have the access policy, the access privileges to do it. So you're going to get a failure, right? The secret, the creation of the secret will fail. The access policy creation might succeed, which means next time you run apply, the access policy and the key vault will be there. So Terraform will just be like, oh, I need to create the secret. But if you want to avoid those situations where you have first time apply failures, you need to declare those dependencies explicitly. I hope this helped you understand when you should use the depends on meta argument, 
what should go in there and the thought process that you should go through when, when you're trying to populate explicit dependencies, what should be an explicit dependency, what needs to be an explicit dependency versus what shouldn't be. Honestly, you could load up the depends on attribute, like I mentioned, with every single resource in your solution. But of, of course, that's just gonna create a bunch of clutter and confusion to somebody like, why does this depends on have 500 things in it? I don't understand. You know, so it's very important to be very purposeful within your code, just like, just like any programming or any software development. If the code doesn't add any value, it shouldn't be there because every line of code is one more line of code that you have to maintain in perpetuity into the future. So be thoughtful about code maintainability, even when you're using HCL and Terraform. Uh, it's a very important thing. Anyways, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this. This is the Azure Terraformer, signing off.